So in this video slide, we will be continuing with the development of the textbook ER model. We just worked in our previous video to establish the relationship between publisher and textbook, which is a one to many relationship. In this video, we are going to go ahead and see how we can establish a one to one relation between publisher and board and a many to many relationship between textbook and author. So in order to do that as a first step, um, we're going to first uh, work on establishing the relationship between publisher and board. So we're going to go into MySQL Workbench and we're going to work on that same file that we have been working on. We're going to first create the board entity. Then we're going to establish a one-to-one -one maximum cardinality between the publisher and board. So in a one-to-one -one relationship, either of the two entities can get the foreign key. It doesn't matter, but we don't place it in both the tables. We only place it in one table, and that's a decision that you would have to make. So in this case, we're going to place the foreign key in the board table. My SQL Workbench is going to automatically add the foreign key for us when we establish a one-to-one -one, um, relationship, and all we need to do is rename it to the exact name that we wanted to have. So let's go into MySQL Workbench and add the board entity now. So in my MySQL Workbench, I'm going to click on this model area and it will show you the most recent model that you've been working on. But if you're not seeing it here, you can always click on this file open um, sign and you have to remember whichever folder you saved your model that you are working on and you can select that and open that. In this case, I'm going to double click here because that's the model that I've been working on and it brings you to this page here where you can double click on your EER diagram. So it's going to open that for my textbook um, DB model that we have been working on and we left off here where we had created our publisher and textbook entity and we had established a one to many relationship at whichever point that you're working with your model and um, if you want to close it um, you can always come to file save your model or you can click on file save model as and give it a new name here note that it's saved as a dot m wb file that's the file extension that workbench uses for um, storing these eer model um, models um, in workbench so keep that in mind as you're working with your models so i've come here and um, i have my model um, already in place which is publisher and textbook and now i'm going to come and i'm going to add a new table for my board entity so i'm going to come here click on this and click once here and it adds my new entity here and i'm going to go ahead and look in my board entity to determine the different attributes that i need to add so i'm going to double click here and it brings me to this area that we have been working on i'm going to come here and change this from table one to board and then I'm going to come here and give my column names board ID, which is going to be an integer data type. And that's going to be the primary key for my entity, eventually, which will become my table. I'm going to um, call my next attribute board name, and it's going to be a variable character. And my next one is going to be membership. So I'm going to come here and type membership. And um, I'm also going to have that declared as a variable character. So now that I have added all my fields, I can close here and it creates my entity for me. You can reposition it um, in your you know, drawing space here. So now I have my publisher and board and I'm ready to establish my one-to-one -one relationship. So in order to establish my one-to-one -one relationship, I'm going to come here and I'm going to select this one to one here. So I'm, in order to do that, I wanna click once here, click on my board and then click on my publisher. Um, and I'm just gonna repeat that again. I'm gonna just click out here, um, click here, click once here and click here. So just be careful when you're clicking, like um, you wanna probably not select any of the entities you wanna. So the step is to click once here, click on the first entity where you wanna establish your foreign key based on what we have discussed we are going to have our foreign key in the board entity so that's why we want to click on board first and then we are going to click on publisher and it establishes this one-to-one -one 
relationship between the two entities. And as you can see here, it has added a new attribute as a foreign key, which it has called publisher underscore publisher ID. Now, if we want to keep the name simple, um, which is also recommended because eventually when you want to write your SQL queries, because when we move this model and implement it um, in MySQL as an actual table, it's going to use the same names that we are giving here. So we might want to change the name. And to do that, you can just double click on your entity here, come all the way down to publisher. And if we want to give it the same name as the foreign key, we can just leave it as publisher ID and it you know calls it then you can close this tab here and you see how it just edited the name to publisher id so we have established our one-to-one -one relationship here and we can always check how it has been assigned by clicking on this relationship line here and right clicking coming to edit relationship here and as we can see here we can click on foreign key and it shows us that in the board table we have publisher id and in the publisher table, we have publisher ID. So this is the two entities that have been linked together as a one to one maximum cardinality. So this is how we can check um, the establishment of our foreign key. So again, coming back to what we had established as our business rule, we have established a one to one. When we look at the minimum cardinalities in both the directions, it's mandatory, which means publisher needs to have a board and board needs to have a publisher. So it's important that we also assign the right minimum cardinalities. So when we come here, uh, we can see that um, on, when we added the relationship line, both are mandatory checked, which is good. And that's what we want because if the business rule was different, we had to uncheck it based on what we wanted to do. So in this case, we have established our one-to-one -one relationship for maximum cardinality. And also the minimum cardinalities are mandatory. So we have also established that. So now we're good to move on to um, creating our next ER, like completing the ER diagram for um, the author entity. So next we are going to establish the relationship between textbook and author. So we'll first create the author entity. Then we are going to establish a many to many maximum cardinality. So recall that when we have a many to many relation, we need a new associative entity to be created. My SQL workbench modeler will automatically create the new associative entity. So when we establish a many to many, it's going to automatically do that. So let's go ahead and add Add a new table called author in MySQL Workbench and these are all the fields that we are going to add and we follow the same steps that we have been doing. So I'm going to come into my MySQL Workbench and I'm going to click here um, and then I'm going to click here. So it, I'm going to place a new table and I'm going to call this table author and I'm going to um, add all the fields to this table. So I can double click here. I can come here and I'm going to call it author and let me go ahead and add all the other fields here. So I've added my fields here. I have author ID, first name, last name, email, and I have affiliation. And these are all um, variable character except for my primary key author ID, which is an integer data type. So I can close this here and I have my author table entity established here. So as a next step, I'm going to establish a many to many relationship between the two tables. So I'm going to come here and in my options here, you can see that you have a many to many option. So that's the option that I want to pick because I'm adding a many to many relation. So I'm going to come click here and then I'm going to click on this entity and then click on this entity and it should establish my uh, many to many relationship for me. So I'm going to come click here, um, click here click here. Just be careful when you're clicking. Um, sometimes you might have to repeat the step because you have to click on the entity with nothing else selected and the other entity. And as you can see here, it has automatically created my um, associative entity for me. Since I clicked on textbook first and then author, it called it as textbook has author and it has automatically established um, you know, two of the keys from both of these tables here as a foreign key. So it has taken um, ISBN and author ID together to become 
primary keys and these both together are also foreign keys in this new associative entity that has been created. So as we can see, it's automatically created this for us. We can go ahead and make changes to the names of these if we want to, um, to make it more simpler for us. And in order to do that, all we have to do is just double click on this entity here and we can change it to the name that we want to give that particular associative entity. So, um, so to make it simple, I'm just going to call it textbook author. So to do that, I can come and edit the field here and just say textbook author. And if I want to just call this field ISBN instead of textbook underscore ISBN, I can come and change the name here as well as come to my author ID and repeat the same step. Nothing about any of the settings change. It's just the name that's changing. We're just making it easier so that, you know, when we go ahead and push this model into um, MySQL, it has easier names, specifically when you're writing your queries, it's more easier to, you know, use these kind of simpler names. Now, if I come into my foreign key tab here, um, we can see that these are two of the foreign key names and these are the tables that it has referenced. It's referenced both the textbook and the author table because it's an associative entity. And you can click on the foreign key field here and you can see that ISBN is referenced to ISBN. And then we can click here and we can see that author ID is referenced to author ID. So it has technically establish those foreign key relationships in the model for us. And as we can see here, we have this associative entity that has been created. Um, and also when we are creating an associative entity, we have from textbook um, to author, the maximum cardinality would be many. And from author to textbook, it would be many. So it has established um, this associative entity for us. If we need to check anything, we can always come on these between these two entities. We can edit the relationship line here and check the foreign key establishments again. It's a one to many and we want to leave it the exact way how it has been assigned to us because um, that's what, how we want it to be when we are creating an associative entity here. So if we ever want to change any of the minimum cardinalities, in this case, it's both everything is required and mandatory. But if the business rule is asking us to change any of that, we can always right click on that relationship line, come to our foreign key and uncheck any of the things that doesn't have to be mandatory. And that is only based on the business rule. But if not, we can leave it as it is. And then once you have looked at all your model and when you're ready to save your model, you can come to file and you can hit on save model. And if you need to save it to a new file, a folder, you can come to model, save model as and select whichever location on your computer you want to save it. Remember, it's going to save it as a .mwb file. It's a model file that it's saving it as.